want to make two other points about uh, vertical projectile motion. First of all, remember that we're considering the case where the only significant force on the object is gravity. We're ignoring air resistance. Remember that's called free fall. Uh, it's called free fall even if the object is moving up at first. Remember that in the path I just had on the board, at first the object was moving up and then it was moving down. It might be a little bit weird to think of that as falling, but it still falls under the general category of free fall. Free fall is just a term that means that the only significant force on the object is gravity. So even when the object is initially moving up, we're still going to consider that as falling into the category of free fall. Uh, the other point I wanted to make is to point out um, that we're going to do something that's a little bit different than maybe some textbooks do. Um, a lot of textbooks use special equations when they're dealing with projectile motion. For example, uh, we know that our standard equation for projectile motion, our standard equation for kinematics, here's a standard kinematics equation a standard kinematics equation in the y component. Uh, this is the type of equation we would have used uh, in our previous series of videos, although we usually used x components. But a lot of the time, textbooks don't use the standard equations for projectile motion. Instead, they specialize them. So what your textbook might say for uh, projectile motion is, this might be the equation that your textbook uses for free fall. Um, they might explicitly plug in the acceleration. They might say, well, the acceleration here is going to be g. And then they put in this negative sign. Um, and uh, I just wanted to point out that in this series of videos, we're not going to do this. We're not going to use these special equations. We're just going to use the general kinematics equations and plug into those. I think that's a little bit better for beginning students. Um, for one thing, um, that helps to make it clear that there's really not that much that's new in this series of videos. Everything that we're doing in this series of videos is just an application of the previous series on general, uh, on general one-dimensional motion. Projectile motion in one dimension um, just involves using the old formulas for um, one-dimensional motion, and we're just going to plug in um, a particular number for the acceleration, but there's nothing that's new here. The other reason I don't really like this very much is that this forces you to choose up as the positive direction, right? It doesn't make sense to say that the acceleration here has this negative sign unless you've already chosen up as your positive direction. Well, maybe sometimes you want to choose down as your positive direction. Um, if you're actually moving down, it might make more sense to choose the direction of motion, which is down as your positive direction. So the, only, the other reason I'm not too uh, wild about this way of solving problems is that it assumes that you're always choosing up as the positive direction. I don't think that's necessarily the best way to approach things. Okay, this is maybe not such a crucial issue either way, uh, but if you're going to try to learn the material from these videos, you should probably try to use the approach in these videos. So even if your textbook is using this equation with this negative sign and this g, um, in these videos try to use the approach that we're using, which is to go back to the original general kinematics equations. And all we're going to do is we're just going to use the original equation that every time we have the vertical acceleration, we're just going to plug in 9.8 for that vertical acceleration. And whether that's positive or negative will depend on what we chose as our positive direction. Uh, if any of that was not clear, um, hopefully it'll be a lot clearer in a second when we start doing examples. Uh, it'll be a lot clearer how I suggest that you should solve these problems when we start doing examples.